Hey, Tacos. Thank you for joining chat. I'm sorry, I was ending the video finish. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, yeah. Yeah, what a, what a human piece of garbage. Like, checklist all... I mean... Yeah. And you guys want to know something really funny? Not funny. It's not funny at all. But it's just like the, the irony of life. I, I don't understand. Uh, he gets he gets like bags and bags of love letters. I'm like, yo, Ted Bundy, he used to get like love letters. Like, like people actually wanted to marry him. Like they wanted to have his kids when he was already in jail. Like he was already convicted like he was life in prison like he was already on the death like death row and like they would they would send them like letters and stuff like that like i just i don't understand i i i don't understand the human mind sometimes there's actually a pretty good documentary that kind of dives deep into that and and it's they want to there's a i guess it's like a psychological explanation to why that happens but yeah, and it just boggles my mind. But he gets like, dude, I'm like, this is on a daily basis. He gets like bags of love letters. Like people send him money. I don't under, I, I don't understand. Like, I, I don't understand. Oh, dude, yeah, straight up dumpster juice. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's that's pretty good. Hell yeah. Well, that's a he is. That's exactly what he is. Dude, dumpster juice. Ugh. All right. So yeah, moving on with this video. This one now we'll jump into. Like I said before, the body language of it. He really tried to play it all. This case was it, this. This was really wild, and I think that this is one of the most covered cases on YouTube. Like no lie, like everyone that does true crime at some point has covered this case or has talked about it in some way because it's just it, it it's a it's a very in, it i don't even know how to explain it. it's just a very intense case because uh, it's damn like how can you do something like that i don't know nonetheless let's move it well i'll hit play on this so again this is body language and uh and it's from the police video Witness the exact moments when police knew Chris Watts was guilty in his family's disappearance and the eventual found murder of his pregnant wife and two young daughters. We're going to analyze Chris's... Right, because she was pregnant. I, I forgot to mention that part. She was pregnant. She had two kids. Two daughters. Yeah. Can you play? His body language from police body cameras to show you when police knew he did it. This stunning insight is next. Welcome back to the channel, Derek Van Shake here. Chris Watts is the Northern Colorado man who eventually admitted to killing his pregnant wife and two young daughters on the morning of August 13th, 2018. Right now, you are watching Chris Watts cover up the scene of his crime by loading his deceased pregnant wife and two young daughters into the back seat of his work truck, which took him about 50 minutes that morning. His pregnant wife, Shanann, was found buried in a shallow grave in an eastern Colorado oil field where Chris worked, and the bodies of his two little girls were found dumped in oil. Were you able to see it? It was on the corner, right where the, well, I guess... The follower list is, I guess, blank, but you could see the movement behind it. That was him loading them. Cold-blooded indeed. Neat, um, 90s Pizza Guy, thank you for joining chat. Hope you're having a good night. Real tanks. I live just 40 minutes south of where all this happened. So this case literally hits close to home. At first, Chris Watts claimed his family was just missing. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to watch through police body cameras how this first day unfolded. And I'll point out Chris's body language, which caused police to really suspect he was guilty. 
Since cameras are now everywhere with doorbell cameras, police body cameras, and cell phone cameras, it's shocking to witness firsthand how everything unfolded and then unraveled quickly for Chris that first day. Now, let's get started. How you guys doing? Brother? What's that? Do you remember me? Yeah. Hey, man. Ben, how you been? Hi. You Nicole? Yes. Okay. So what's going on? So my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. Right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9. And I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got two little girls. And um, she was very distraught over the weekend, wasn't eating normally or drinking, and we kept trying to force it on her because she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, her husband and her supposedly are separating. Shout out to this friend. Her. We need friends like this. If you, if, you, if you have a friend like this, if you have one of those friends that worries a lot, keep them, keep them close. Keep them right there. Because those are the type of people that, that you need. Like... I think I saw in an interview, they, I think they interviewed her once, and she said that, yeah, her friend was looking out for her. That's 100%. She, she said that she, she already knew the problems that were happening because the text messages that we saw in the previous video were between them, them both. Uh, so she already, she was up to date with all the problems that were happening, but it's crazy how it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a family member for you to, when, like, when you have, when you're close to someone, and it's not, you know, it's not like a, oh, like a big, but you can kind of, kind of, I don't know if Chad, has anyone ever experienced this? Like kind of feel like something wrong, something's going, something's not right. That's what she describes the reason why she uh, has it, why she was so pressing and going to the house and seeing what was going on because she was going to pick her up for a doctor's appointment. But even then, you know. She, you know, Shanann was pregnant, so if anything, she would have thought like, oh, you know, maybe she's just sleeping, she fell asleep, she can't wake up, whatever, but exactly, great intuition. She was like, you know, something's wrong. This isn't right, and she was the one that called the cops. So, yeah, just wanted to point that out. I'll be present play. But she didn't know this. She thought they were just having issues. He disclosed that to me today. Because okay. I called him, and I was like, have you talked or heard from Shanann since you left for work this morning? Because I can't get a hold of her. I've called, I've texted. Her car's in the garage, her shoes she wears every single day right in the front door. She only has one vehicle? No, they only have the one vehicle and a work truck. Okay, that's and what I'm asking. There's not a... She girl and went on a play date, but they're four and two. She went on a play date? Why wouldn't she take in a car? They're both in car seats. And Bella's so sweet, playing with her baby. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at nine, and she didn't go to the doctor's appointment. Okay. No answer on the phone. Husband's on his way. Minnie Mouse out there for Christmas. But it's been absolutely gorgeous here in Colorado, like always. Um, do you mind calling him and seeing if we can get a passcode to this and get my permit, give him, get me permission to go in? Okay. It's later revealed the garage door keypad doesn't work, so the only way to get into the house is using the remote garage door opener. Chris seems to have made it so no one would be able to go through the house while he was at work, just in case he thought of extra crime scene cleanup that needed to be done while he was at work. I'm just going to check the back, see if I can see anything. At this point, Officer Coonrod is logically thinking Shanann is having a medical emergency, which is why he's banging on windows to hopefully get her children to let them in to help her. Yep, I, I've got to have more unless I get consent from him to go in. Um. So now you can we can slowly see how desperation is starting to kick in and... Slowly, you know, first it was a more calm kind of thing. You know, what's going on now? Officers banging on on the doors and windows, went through the back and everything. So now suspicion is starting to kick in. Right there. <laughs> he's 
<laughs> oh no no no! I got a phone. Yeah, you, you got your fourth minute rights to the house. Yeah. Um, I can't violate that. How you doing? You seen your neighbors today? No. Okay. This is Nate, the next door neighbor with that security camera. Up until this point, of course, he had no reason to check his security camera footage. Oh, we're just trying to get a hold of her. Felt like she wasn't feeling too good and pregnant and they were just concerned. I think he, I, I think he knows something's, he's already starting to know something's definitely, definitely not right. That whole, I mean, depending on how many years that, that officer has uh, on the force, uh, he's probably already, like, if, if he's experienced, that little thing in the back of his head is already starting to kick off. He's like, okay, this isn't, this isn't right. Something's not right. Now Ben is filling in Nate on what's going on and how this is all very odd, which is naturally getting Nate more involved. Please call me. Shannon was at her girlfriend's house. Do we know who that is? Do we know who? Her phone number? He didn't say. When did he tell you that? He needs to be acting funny. I don't, I don't get it. What did he say? He told me that Shannon didn't take the girls to school this morning because she was going to go on a play date, but her car's here. Hey guys. Hold on, I'm just hopping outside right quick. What's Chris's phone number? Hey Chris, Officer Coonrod for the police department. Pretty good. So, so I think we knew that, but they were t Hey Glorious, how are you tonight? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining chat. Uh, I think Munin that he... Well, well, that's the thing. Like He would have... that. That's the next step that they're doing now. They're going to call Chris. But... Um, he can't just go in the house like that without a warrant. Yeah, like he... Yeah. I mean, in a normal circumstance, uh, like only, I think the law says that it's only the other person that is like owner. So then if in this case, it would have been Chris. So that's the next step that the officer is doing now, which is contacting him. But I do understand what you mean, Munin. Uh, well, yeah, but who, but consent from who? That's the thing. Uh, but I do understand what you mean. I mean, I, I think that they, I'm not sure. Maybe you're right. Maybe they should have just gone in and checked. But uh, again, yeah, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from, but I, I do think that it goes against, you know, they have to have like a search warrant or whatever the case may be. Uh... Well, I don't think that they've spoken to him yet. I think that that was just like a, a small, um, like a recap or something. I'm not, not 100, I actually don't remember. Uh, but I know that as of right, oh, Mosquito, <laughs> as of right now, um, I, I didn't get it. She flew away. Uh, as of right now, they're going to call now. So, but I do understand what you mean. Let's see. Let me, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna press play. Do you have any idea where your wife is? Already, Officer Coonrod feels like Chris isn't taking this seemingly serious situation seriously. Okay. Right. What my concern, sir? Gotcha. Okay. So, understood. So, okay. So maybe I maybe I overlooked that part. If that's the case, then yeah, I they should have they should have already gone inside the house. You're absolutely right. 